Here is a simple cost model that we want to assign some uncertainty to. So we start off and we thought, hey, best guess of how much each of these items might cost in order to construct a house. We've got the purchasing of land, $110,000. Uh, the purchase tax, which is 5% of the land purchase price. And then the various other items. And these are our best guessed estimates of each cost item, which arise at a total at the bottom. Now we know that some may be a little smaller and some may be a little larger than these original estimates. So we can start thinking about what would the minimum and the maximum of each of these cost items be? So to do that, I'm just going to open a couple of other columns. And you can see here, they're put in a minimum for each cost item and a best guess we had before, and then a maximum. Of course, the minimum is going to be less than or equal to the best guess, and the maximum is going to be greater than or equal to the best guess. So we have each of these items down here. We don't want to put a, an actual value. You want to put a percentage. So you can see 5% times D4. And we copy that formula across. So 5% of 105, 5% of 110. We see at the bottom, we have the total. So this is saying that the best guess is $404,000. The minimum is going to be 370.8 and the maximum is 443. And that looks quite reasonable, but we have to ask ourselves, well, what is the chances of a value as high as 443 occurring or a value as low as 370.8? For 370.8 to occur, each of these cost items would have to be at their minimum possible value, which would be extremely lucky. On the other hand, for the maximum cost to be 443,000, each of these would have to be at their maximum value. So very unlucky as well. So to try and get a better estimate of what the realistic range is, we're going to assign a probability distribution to each one of these cost items. And we can do that by inserting a probability distribution for each item. So I'm hide here, I've got the random variable. Now, I'm going to put in a random variable and it, for each one of these cost items. You can see here, minimum, most likely maximum. I'd like to insert a probability distribution function that will take those three parameters as its inputs. And I can do that in several different ways with model risk. So the first way will be good to go up to the model risk ribbon, click on select distribution, and we will pick the common type of distribution. And you can see here a PERT and a triangle. These two functions take those minimum, most likely and maximum tensions. Let's select the triangular distribution just because it's the easiest one to understand. Okay. All right, so minimum, most likely maximum. And now I'm going to assign these uh, three parameters here from the spreadsheet to that distribution. So let's click on here, this icon, and it's going to ask me for the minimum. That's this one there. Okay. Then ask me for the most likely, that's this one, and the maximum, this one here. Okay. And then I'm going to insert it to the worksheet. So you see minimum, most likely a maximum because the most likely and maximum are the same price, you can see most likely and the maximum appear here. Insert to the watch sheet. Right, so now I've entered a function. If I show the function, it's VOS for model risk, triangle, because it's the type of distribution with these three parameters. Right, so I could copy this down to other cells. So here I've got exactly the same formula, but now referring to these three parameters, and I could keep going. I could also, for example, I could go into the model risk quick paste and select the distribution and find the appropriate distribution this way. This is useful if you're using many of the other functions. So let's look for the triangular distribution here. 
and you will see that it has a standard Excel interface allows you to select the input parameters. Right, so I want the first parameter to be that value. The second parameter to be this one here. Third parameter to be that one. So triangle C, D, E. Okay. I can, of course, just type the function in directly. Equals close triangle. And I can make references to the cells or I could go control A and I'll get that same interface. Pick each of these values in time. Okay. Because these are just standard functions, user-defined functions, they behave in exactly the same way as any other Excel function. So I can control C, control V to put the function in. I can drag it down to the rest of the column or I could have double clicked. I have filled it all. Now I've laid one mistake. You'll notice that the purchase tax is meant to be the 5% of the land price. And so that's written here for 5% of the purchase price in the previous row. But right now I got triangle where it's taking an independent sample, random sample from 5.3, 5.5, 5.5. And that isn't necessarily equal to 5% of the land price. So if I was to look at the ratio between that tax and the actual purchase land price at QC in this case, it's 4.9%. What I need to do here is I need to make it equal the previous value for the price of the purchasing lamp times 5% because it's not independent. Now, what I've done is I've inserted functions for each of these uncertain variables and each function are creating grands of scenarios. So here, random scenario, we've got a cut total cost of uh, Bushy's land, 100 make 0 0.08. At the same time, 5.4 for the tax. At the same time, illegal fees, 2.91, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. And you can see at the bottom, I've summed the total of, of order those individual costs to get an estimate of the total cost of the actual project as a whole. So $403.2 thousand dollars. And as I hit the F9 key, you will see that these numbers are changing. Each one of those is representing a possible scenario. The way that Monte Carlo simulation works, it means that each one of these scenarios that you are seeing has equal probability. Now, in order to run the simulation model, I need to tell model risk which of these functions or which of these cells are inputs and which are outputs. So let's just click on this cell here and we're going to name it as an input. To do that, I go up into this menu, click on Mark Output Input, tell it it's an input. I'm going to give it a name, which will be Purchase Land. And it's a useful thing to try and put in some units. So what are the units of this? Use of thousands of dog. Okay, now I can copy this all the way down Remembering that by doing so, I'm going to have changed its formula. So I'll just change that formula back again. That's equal to the previous value times 5%. And I don't want to name an output. There's only one output to this model, which is the total. So let's do that. Click again on the inputs output. Select output. Give it a name. The name is total cost. Also, we would like to select the units. Again, it's thousands of dollars. Okay. And now what you'll see is that in, inside each of the cells, we have an adapted formula. Here we've got those output. This is the name, which is total cost. And these are the units. Cost the formula that was originally there. Similarly, for each of the inputs, we have a function that is same those input with a name for the imprepairable and the units plus the formula that was originally there. And I'm finished creating my model. Now what I need to do is run the simulation. I have to select how many samples I want to run. Usually 5,000 would be easily enough. 
So 5,000 samples, that needs 5,000 different random scenarios that can be generated. And I click on the Start button, and it will start running in simulation. So you see here in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a simulation progress. It's telling me that I've merely completed the 5,000 sample. And when it's finished, it will generate a report. So this is the results for Pure. And you are seeing here, we've got one simulation and one output, and the name of the output is total cost. You might remember that the ex expectation or the most likely value was $404,000. That's sitting somewhere in here, it's roughly somewhere in the middle. We've got a number of the inputs, also sharing here. And then we can start looking at the what would be a realistic price or a budget that we would set for this particular project. So here, for example, 95% are $414,000. So if we set a budget of $440,000, we've got a 95% chance of odd of having enough money to complete the project. We can have a tornado chart. So in the tornado chart, we need to define a output, like the total cost, and inputs. And what that does is it shows me which are the factors inside the model that are driving the uncertainty about the total cost. That tells me that if I could reduce the uncertainty in the most important variables here, like roofing and insulation, that will have the greatest effect on reducing the uncertainty in the total cost. We also have a cumulative plot. If I want to look, for example, at the probability of having enough money, this is showing the probability that the cost is greater than the specific number on the horizontal axis, you receive a units in $1,000 there. So if you only had $390,000, for example, you're almost certainly not certain not to have enough money. If you have $415,000, you're almost certain to have enough money. We can also look at other types of charts. For example, maybe I want to put in a box plot and I want to compare the total cost against all of these inputs. So there's a total cost. And here are each one of the inputs shown as a box plot, which can be shown either through as a box plot of this or as with a histogram version. And you can see the spread of uncertainty around each of these cost items. And because they are all in the same units, it displays what those units are. If they were different, then it would show that there was an error. You can't directly compare them. 